Hi! In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the GP Install Server Unity asset for terrain grass and vegetation. I have a blank scene here, and I've already downloaded the GP Install Server asset to this project. I have a few prefabs and some textures to use for this demonstration. So I'll start by adding a terrain to this scene, and I'll quickly add a texture to this terrain so that we don't look at something white here. And I will add a grass detail texture as I normally would. And for now, I'll just use the default settings. I will also paint a little bit grass here so that we can use this for instancing. I will also increase the view distance so we can look at what we've seen here. I will just quickly do this for demonstration purposes. And this is sort of what you would do if you had a normal workflow. Okay, that should be enough. I will also quickly add a first person camera here. And you can find one in the GPU instances demos folder, shared resources, prefabs. The FP controller so that we can walk around and see what we're looking at. Okay, if I run the scene now, Unity would normally render the grass like this. It's a high FPS number as well, like 400 FPS for this grass. And we've distributed some grass here, not too much. To add GP instancer to this terrain here, all I have to do is to go to the GP instancer menu and add a detail manager for this terrain. This is all that is necessary to use GP instancer with the default settings on your terrain. If I run the scene now, it will run with the GP instancer's own foliage shader with the same detail settings data. And you will see that you will have a higher FPS number here. From 400, we're bumping up to 1000 FPS here. Also, notice that you will have shadowing on your grass as well. So the default settings are making these textures quads, as you can see here. And the default setting is two quads per grass detail. So let's have a look at the detail manager here. On the top you will always see a GP instance versioning number, which is 08 at this point. Uh, and next to it you will see a question mark. This question mark uh, shows you a detailed information about the options you have here. And uh, if you click on a prototype, you will also see the prototypes options with details here. Um, when you add a detail manager like this on your terrain, it pairs the terrain with the specific detail manager. You can click on this button to go to the terrain and uh, click on this button on the edit component to the terrain here to go back to the instance. By going on the terrain, you can paint your prototypes on the terrain, the detailed prototypes, and go back to the GPU instance to give it settings here. Uh, you can unset the terrain by breaking the connection between this terrain and this manager. This won't remove any of them. Uh, but break its, their connection. And you can choose your own camera if you are not happy with the auto-selected camera here. Actually, we have two cameras. We added the previous one uh, and then added a game object with a, an, another camera here. But GP Instancer is automatically detecting it since we added it later on. Um, so, we have a simulation option here under this debug menu. And by using this button, you can see how your terrain will look like with all the settings that you have defined um, without having to go through the trouble of running the game in the editor here. This is not designed to be used while painting your details, it's just to give you an idea about how your terrain will look like. 
under the global values you will find values that apply to all the prototypes that you have and the prototype specific options will be below them when you click the prototypes themselves uh, again at any time you can click the question mark button to have an understanding about what the options are for example we have the max detail distance here which corresponds to the terrain's detail distance value and applies globally to uh, the visibility of all the prototypes here and you will find a similar max distance in the prototypes that apply to the specific prototypes weaving distance most of the prototype specific options we have here should be self-explanatory in themselves but you can always check this question mark again uh, to get an idea about what they are so um, well, we have options for whether they should be shadow casting or custom calling, uh, or as we talked about, this the maximum weaving distance can be, per instance, defined here. Also, we have the exact similar properties that the Unity details have in the terrain. So if I go to the terrain, and view the grass uh, options here, we you have the minimum and the maximum widths. You minimum and maximum heights, no spread and uh, dry and healthy colors here. You will find the exact um, similar options in the GP Instancer menu, where you have the detail scale defined by minimum and the maximum width here, the minimum and the maximum height here. Um, you have uh, the dry and healthy colors, and the uh, noise spread is the exact same in the, uh, and it works the same way with the Unity details option that you have there. Um, these options appear only if you use the foliage shader provided by the GP Instancer uh, Detail Manager. If you want to use your own custom material with your custom shader here, you can use this by selecting this checkbox here, in which you can uh, give, supply a material which has its own shader, and that shader will be auto-converted to work with GP Instancer. All you have to do is just drag and drop the material here. Uh, even if you use this custom material, you, you can keep using the coding options that GP Instancer provides for these details. So, by default, Unity um, shows only a single quad for each texture and billboards it. You can, of, of course, choose if you want to billboard it or not with Unity as well, but uh, you don't have the coding options. So, what if I simulate this scene? What you can do is currently two quads are selected. GP Instancer makes uh, across two quads of this texture, which makes it look a bit more realistic and a bit more detailed. Um, you can, of course, improve your quality by improving uh, by increasing the quad counts. And at four quads, it looks like this. Uh, there is also a billboarding going on with these quads to improve performance. Um, the, the ones that are closer to the camera are only being quadded and the rest are being billboarded. And um, you can debug this by using this debugger here. And the distance you can set from this bar. Uh, if I simulate this again, you will see that this red color is showing me the ones that are not being quadded but billboarded instead. And if I look at them, you will see that they are being billboarded. This has a huge impact of improving the performance. So uh, you can change the distance as you need it. If you change any of the settings that is shared with the Unity terrain details, like uh, this detail scale here, for example, if you wanted a shorter prototype here uh, and if you want to reflect those changes on the terrain that you see in the editor without simulating all you have to do is to apply the changes to the terrain with this button here and you will see that the changes are being reflected on the unity terrain um, this shader that comes with GPU instances uh, has various other visual options uh, which should be self-explanatory and I won't be going into the details of this. You have ambient occlusion or wind stuff here. And you can always check the question mark to have more details about them. Um, let's add another prototype. Uh, if you wanted to add a 
texture prototype in other grass for example all you have to do is um, drag and drop your grass texture here and you will have the second prototype with the default option set let's change the color for this for example a purplish color maybe a darkish for the dry one uh, let's turn off wind for this uh, four cost cuts let's leave the detail scale as it is to reflect the changes uh, you click the apply changes to terrain um, and let's go to the terrain and you will see that the edit prototype has been also added to this terrain here let's choose it and let's paint it and if you go back to GP instance over here and or let's run the game you will see that it is simple to add new prototypes using the detail manager menu that we have GP Instancer also allows you to add prefabs to your terrain as detail meshes. Uh, this is pretty much like adding a detail mesh to your Unity terrain, but you're not restricted to use any uh, terrain specific shaders for this. For example, this boulder here is using the standard material with a standard shader. And if I add this to the detail manager by dragging and dropping it, you will see that none of the custom foliage shader properties are showing here but you can change the scale or unity specific properties here for example let's change uh, the size of this looked a little bit too big uh, you're not seeing any color options here because the color is coming from the material that the uh, original prefab is using so if I go to the if I apply the changes first and go to the terrain that you will see that this boulder is added here with a preview image and if I start painting this maybe not that much you will see that this is added as a prefab with the colors that are defined in the boulder here so if I run this you will see nothing has changed in its material here It's also worth noting that um, you can also add LOD materials like this, LOD prefabs like this. So we have this fern here with three LODs in it. Normally you wouldn't be able to add LOD prefabs to the uh, Unity terrain, but if you add this to the GP Instancer Detail Manager, you will see, let's not change any settings here, that also snapshot is taken from the first LOD here and uh, if you paint this you would see them as you normally would see a prefab and let's run this game again the LOD groups are working and it's this simple also notice that this fern that we just added is using a custom shader on it which is actually the foliage shader that we're using for grass in a uh, GP instancer and this also shows that you can use your custom materials with custom shaders on them uh, with unity terrain details when using GP instancer if you have a custom shader when you add them add the prefab to the detail manager here it will automatically be converted to be used with GP instancer so you have you don't have to do anything about it this pretty much completes all I have to show about how to use the detail manager and use detail instancing with GP instancer well I haven't talked much about the shader properties that we have here but we have a scene to demonstrate that if you go to the GP instancer demos add modify terrain runtime folder and if you open up the scene and run the scene the scene uh, is provided to act as a tutorial to show you how to add and remove 
terrains or change terrain shader properties at runtime, but it also has this option of changing the material properties at runtime. So if I open up Windways, for example, you will see at re real time the changes being reflected on a terrain here. Well, we can change terrain tint properties, and uh, you can check the code for this. It is actually written in the description. If you hover over each property, you will have a description for them in the scene through the GUI. Uh, if you open up the terrain generator CS, you will see how you, to manipulate these uh, detail properties at runtime as well. Uh, that's, that goes beyond the scope of this video, so I won't be going into that right now. And this is pretty much everything I have to talk about today. If you have any questions, you can always contact us through Unity Asset Store or our webpage. And thank you for watching.